Thank you everyone for attending. So as uh, Dan indicated, I'll be talking today about uh, this project we did for, uh, for Iowa DOT and it was basically focusing on how uh, polyester polymer concrete will, will perform uh, once placed on somewhat older uh, bridge decks. Uh, so just starting with like an overall object of most of the state DOTs is that they want to keep the bridge network in a good state of repair at the lowest possible uh, life cycle cost. So that includes designing structures of bridges that last longer, but also applying appropriate repairs as these structures are getting older. So for a bridge, uh, the bridge world, they use either a preservation or rehabilitation techniques to uh, keep the structures in service. Uh, so if you look at decks, if you have uh, a general NBI condition rating, which rates like one to nine, because nine is the best, one is the worst, or actually one is gone in a way. Uh, so NBI seven is kind of in that good side. So if you have your bridge deck is in a, in a somewhat good condition and you want to preserve it and have it live longer, you can do something like a deck or crack sealer. You can put some polymer overlays, which have a very small permeability, so they protect your deck from like moisture and chlorides that goes through it and can cause corrosion, which is for Midwest states or states that use the ice and salt, this is the most common degradation type corrosion of reinforcement. Uh, if you have an older bridge deck, then you need to do some kind of repair that includes removing that concrete and uh, delaminated spalled concrete. And then you do partial depth repairs. In some cases, if it's bad enough, you do full depth repairs. And then you put an overlay. And usually, these are rigid concrete overlays. Uh, in, in this case, we did a, a research project that was basically a lit review for Iowa DUT to look at polymer overlays and how these can be used. And Iowa DUT has a very long history in using what they call uh, low uh, slump uh, dense concrete overlays. Uh, they have been using these since the 70s, and we did the study to look at polymer overlays. We looked at thin polymer overlays. We also looked at polymer, uh, polyester polymer concrete overlays. Uh, so thin polymer overlays are overlays, multi-layer epoxies, they are also called. But basically, you put them on layers, and you make a polymer overlay that's between a quarter and three-eighths of an inch thick. For polyester polymer concrete, you actually mix this like, like a concrete. And you end up with an overlay that's at least three quarters of an inch in thickness, but you can also have it bigger. You can have two inches or even more if you want. But some of the uh, advantages of using polymer overlays in general, where is the speed of application, uh, uh, you can extend the service life, especially if you put it early on. Uh, but there are some disadvantages, which is they ha need a contractor that knows uh, the material they're dealing with, because there are some limitations on putting them at certain temperatures or certain, like if, if you have water or rain, can't play the overlay. Uh, so they are prone to construction errors uh, and bond to concrete substrate, especially if your substrate is uh, degraded enough, uh, is potentially an, an issue. So you need to have good surface prep uh, before you actually put this. Uh, so following our study, um, our DOT decided that they want to test this out and use the polymer concrete overlays in, in particular. And uh, uh, they identified two bridge decks. So uh, like trial bridges to apply this technique for, and they asked us to do uh, a study with the objective of evaluation the performance in five years of PPC overlays, uh, polyester polymer concrete, it's short PPC, uh, to be applied in two older bridge decks in Iowa and develop guidelines for Iowa duties that can aid in the implementation, design, and construction of future uh, PPC overlays in the state. So um, since these bridge decks were a little older, and that will show you the dates uh, later on, uh, we wanted to have an understanding of what the deck condition is. Because if, in theory, if the deck condition is, is bad enough, you will still get corrosion happening below that polymer concrete, and that can cause degradation to happen much faster than if you apply the overlay earlier. So it might be that the overlay is not performing well just because the, the decks that you put it on was already like degraded enough and it will continue degrading and, and we didn't want to think that the overlays are, are not working. So so our first task was document reviews and initial deck evaluation. We did construction documentation in this case basically because the contractors that was placing these overlays, this was the first time they ever used it. This wasn't used in the state of Iowa before. And they wanted someone who has 
more experience with the material to also be out there besides the manufacturer of the material who is also out there, uh, just to make sure everything is going according to their specs. Uh, then we uh, are doing a lab investigation, uh, service life modeling, uh, and life cycle cost analysis. We are in the process of doing a five year performance evaluation, and finally, we are going to give them some uh, reports. Just to note, this is an ongoing project, so we completed some of the tasks, not everything is done yet. Uh, so the two uh, trial bridges we had, uh, one was in the Lynn County, and this was located on, on, a, on a general street in, in Rapid City, basically, and it was constructed in 1972. This is studied in 2019, so that one was already 47 years old. The second one, which is older, it's in Jasper County, it's on the I-80, so it's seeing huge amount of traffic, especially truck traffic, and it was constructed in 1962, it was 57 years old when we put the overlay on. Both, over, uh, both bridges had an, an overlay already, which is part of our duty practice. They, after 20, 25 years, they take the cover out and you put an overlay on. Uh, so the Lynn County had one in 1998. Jasper County had one in 1981. So our, uh, our work uh, included, again, the initial deck evaluation. So we did full visual surveys. Uh, and the elimination survey. Uh, we did a cover survey with GPR, uh, which will help us in the service life modeling uh, that we'll do later um, in this project. And then we also did a corrosion potential survey using half cell uh, pressure measurement to so get an understanding and calibrate our models how much corrosion is actually happening uh, in the original bridge deck. So for the Lane County Bridge and the Jasper County Bridge, they did stage construction. So they had one lane closed for that Lane County Bridge. And then they took and then they move over. So we did our uh, assessment on both uh, stages of construction. In the Jasper County, it starts as stage two, because stage one was basically just uh, doing some repairs and abutments. But stage two was the back. And for that one, uh, the DOT wanted us to only do one of the lanes of that bridge, because uh, they didn't want us to interfere much with the contractor, because it's sort of I-80, and they wanted this to be be done very fast. So we only did our full assessment in one of the uh, lanes uh, during this uh, one. Uh, so here's a picture of what we did. Again, uh, collected uh, GPR information. This is like half cell potential measurement. And we also collected some concrete cores that we did chloride testing on to gain an understanding of uh, how much chlorides are already in that bridge. Uh, so here is uh, some of the pictures of the conditions that we uh, documented. This was after the contractor already went out and removed the existing concrete cover. Uh, so when, when they were doing this, some of the concrete already spoiled, as you can see here. Uh, we then also marked additional locations uh, that were eliminated so that we can also remove uh, uh, that this concrete and, and place uh, new material. And in this case, the partial dips repairs were actually completed using the plaster polymer concrete. So they didn't place concrete, you just use the PPC because it, it sets much faster. It sets like in a day, uh, it gets full, pretty much full strength, so they can then uh, move on with the repairs. Uh, here is a, a, a graph of uh, the information we collected. So up here, this is the half cell potential. Uh, green means low uh, likelihood of corrosion. Red means you have high likelihood of corrosion in these uh, places, more negative than the 350. Uh, uh, millivolt, uh, and this agreed very well with the locations where we had uh, uh, laminated or spoiled concrete, which are these red areas here. Uh, we and then we collected cores from different locations uh, to get an idea of how the chloride penetrated uh, throughout the set. And then we also collected concrete cover information at all these different lines here, A through G, and you can see there is a very high range of distribution of where that cover. Uh, where that steel was uh, below the surface. Uh, this is the same thing for the remaining of the bridge. So that's uh, 270, so it doesn't fit in one shot. Yeah, two shots. Uh, so trial application, uh, this was specified in the special provisions. They wanted the contractor to actually try this out before going to full production mode. And we decided that we do this in the partial dips repairs because they will place the partial dips repairs with the same method. Uh, so they fit the mixing, they placed it, uh, the special provision uh, specified that we do Schmidt hammer testing. More than 25 uh, was was the value that the target value. If you are more than 25, then you achieved your strength. 
And then we also did bond testing where you basically attach your, your bond measurement to the top of that uh, overlay material or in the case of partial depth repair material and you pull it out. If you are more than 250 PSI, then you have good bond. The other option is you can have less than 250 PSI, but 100% of the failure is in the concrete substrate. That means that your concrete is just, just bad. It's, it's deteriorated, it's old, uh, doesn't have enough PSI. So this is what you're working with. Uh, so here's the construction observation. Uh, we were out there, I mean, they, they placed their uh, primer and then they placed the overlay. This is how it looked after it was placed. Uh, did the same thing for that stage two construction. Um, we had our half cell potential partial because when we were at the site already, the contractor removed most of the concrete before we were actually there. So we didn't get access to the first 70 feet, but we had the rest, uh, 85 feet actually. Um, and then, after one year, we actually went out and did an inspection, and uh, we did see some cracking uh, for that bridge, as you can see in the green line here. Uh, one area had uh, a little bit of uh, delamination sound that you can hear it, and then there is another area that uh, they actually uh, had to repair after they placed it because it wasn't uh, good enough. For me. They were trying to, because what the way they did that, yes. Stripping out uh, the rails that they use for the screen, they took part of the overlay. So they had to go back and it. But overall, it was um, good condition. Only one little area less than two square feet uh, had, had an issue. Uh, for the Jasper County bridge, uh, again, this is the older, this is the older bridge that uh, we actually again, did the same thing. But you can see. From this chart, we don't have a lot of green here. This is mostly corroding already. Uh, there was one area that they had to do a full depth repair, and we actually uh, chose to do it with concrete, fast setting concrete instead of PPC. PPC just have a, a lower Young's model, so it makes like a soft spot in your deck if you do a full, a full depth repair. Um, but we went out, and in this one, we actually See, have seen more deterioration at year one, so uh, there's uh, like five spots where we can hear that there's some delamination, and then there was some spots also that had a very visible corrosion stain. Uh, some pictures are here, you can see corrosion product coming out uh, at the cracking from that overlay. Uh, we actually did our third year inspection last week. Uh, I don't have the results shown here, but instead of five spots, uh, most of the spots that had corrosion staining uh, or actually now you can also hear that they are uh, delaminating as well. Uh, so our ongoing work is we will uh, do additional performance evaluation, uh, three year and again that's five year. Uh, we complete service life modeling uh, and we use our uh, WGE proprietary software it's called WGE Castles, corrosion assessment and service life evaluation software. But, and what this basically does it, is you can do a probabilistic model that you can model, like you can put input like the cover, how much chloride you have, what's your concrete max, what's your diffusion coefficient, and what is the overlay uh, information as well. And from here, you can actually make predictions on service life extension if you have a certain kind of repair or if you don't do anything. Uh, so we can, so we're gonna do this analysis, and basically this information will compare the performance of what we would get from this PPC overlay versus if they just did a regular rigid uh, low slump. Uh, concrete uh, dense overlays uh, to do a benefit to cost ratio uh, analysis to, to highlight uh, the PPC benefits as a late life uh, rehabilitation uh, technique. Uh, so in summary, two PPC overlays uh, were placed on, on trial bridges that were again fairly old, 47 and 57 years with varying degrees of corrosion related damage. Uh, we did construction certification, documentation, acceptance testing to make sure that everything in the construction stage was done correctly, so we know where we are from the beginning. Uh, the one-year inspection showed that there is minimal damage uh, in both overlays, although the three-year inspection showed more damage in the Jasper County uh, uh, overlay. Uh, the next steps is to conduct the two additional inspections. Uh, we are going to do lab testing to evaluate uh, the dry pond strengths of the PPC uh, to concrete uh, according to California test methods and also uh, a model of testing. Uh, service life modeling will be completed. 
And uh, our models will actually consider the removal of colorized and corrosion products in the areas that we're, uh, we did the repair. Uh, and then finally, we, at five years, we'll actually collect concrete cores and do um, uh, chloride diffusion testing to see uh, how much the UV degradation that polymer overlays can, can, can have uh, affected, because we did testing at the beginning, so we'll also do testing uh, at the end to compare these results. And at the end, I would like to acknowledge the support of the Iowa Highway Research Board for funding this project and the tech members of Iowa DVT for their input as well.